Hello everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host Scott and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening this week and beyond as it is Wake Up Missoula. I'm here to talk about everything Missoula from the local to the national to many different things. Uh, we have city council report where we're going to be talking about the affordable housing, a place called home, a new policy that Missoula initiated today and I'll talk a little bit more about that, about how uh, some citizens in Missoula are concerned and how others are very thrilled about this new housing policy. Um, in other news. It's looking like the weather's going to be kind of a mixture of things, you know, thunderstorms, more clouds are coming in. We're still kind of having the spring showers kind of hold on well until the summer. So we'll take a look at uh, the weather. Uh, currently it is 53 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 82. So it's going to be a beautiful day today. And then the chance of thunderstorms go up to about 50 percent. Pretty much stay for a little bit during this week. It'll start lowering down by Friday with a 30 percent chance of thunderstorms, but it's going to be mostly cloudy. Uh, Saturday's going to be mostly sunny, so you guys are planning on doing anything out and about this weekend might be the chance to do it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on, and uh, many uh, fire departments are urging citizens to be extremely careful as the 4th of July draws near. It is exactly uh, Eight days from today is when uh, 4th of July is going to kick off. Um, so, and of course the city uh, passed an ordinance a couple of years back that uh, firing of fireworks within the city limits is considered illegal and you could be fined. So just be aware of that. Of course, I'll talk a little bit more about it this Friday as well since actually today is the last Wednesday show I'll be doing for a while. Um, so I'm gonna make it uh, a good one for you guys. So let's uh, talk about some news items that are happening with this week. The officers, Office of the Commissioner of Higher Education has been audited, and boy, <laughs> there's been some spending for some personal use. Uh, what started off as a trips to Grizzcat Games and hotel costume became flights and hotel rooms for officials and non-officials alike, uh, as well of a pool of funds of $60 million that go towards the Montana Family Education Savings Program and other functions within the office. The office had not followed proper procedures for spending nearly $100,000 in federal grant money on travels to conferences in Portland and Las Vegas. In uh, these cases, the auditor's report found that the commissioner's office, in quote, did not limit travel of non-employees for conferences for federal programs to be absolute minimum as required by office policy, end quote. It is currently unclear that uh, cl clear Tuesday whether the commissioner's office would face penalties or uh, request for repayment, and you can read the full article on the Missoulian. In state news, smoke is bad for your health, and the fire season is upon us. We got all these thunderstorms going on this week, so you got to be very careful because that could set off a lot of fires in this area, and a lot of officials are batting down the hatches for that kind of thing. So. NASA reports that wildfires are causing many health issues for millions of Americans, especially as summers become more and more intense. The scope of this problem is immense. Over the next three decades, more than 300 counties in the West will see more severe smoke waves from wildfires, sometimes lasting weeks longer than in past years, according to the Asmeric researchers led by a team from Yale and Harvard. For almost two weeks last year during the camp campfire, um, which was a fire in the camp area, which killed 85 people and destroyed 14,000 homes in Paradise, California. The long-term effects have only recently come to focus with estimates that chronic smoke exposure can cause 20,000 premature deaths per year, said Jeff Pierce, associate professor at the Asmeric Science of, at Colorado State University. That figure could be doubled by the end of this century due to hotter, drier conditions as and much longer fire se seasons, according to Pierce. Residents of Northern California, Western Oregon, Washington State, and the Northern Rockies are projected to suffer the worst increases in smoke exposure as trends continue. In national news, Robert Mueller is all in the news because he is being subpoenaed t to speak in front of Congress on July 17th. Um, as part of the investigation for uh, Russian interference in the 2016 election and possible obstruction of justice by President Donald J. Trump, giving Democrats the star witness they've long awaited for to put uh, before the American public. NPR reports that Mueller finished the, his report and then took a step back to let the administration handle what the next step is. Mueller, who investigated Trump for the last two plus years and the election and many other things regarding, will now speak about the investigation open and live. Um, Mueller has spoken out in a public 
uh, okay, so Mueller has only spoken publicly once about this, and that was when he said he finished the report, and then he kind of took a step back because he wanted to remain unbiased. Um, uh, may, he made a state, uh, statement to reporters at the Justice Department in May, and it, he said he hoped it would be his last comment on this subject. Of course, uh, you'll be uh, hearing more about this live July 17th, which will be the date you guys will be able to hear this. I believe it will start as early as 9, or actually it's usually the 9 over there. It might be even as early as 7 a.m. over here. It really depends, so y you can pretty much watch it anywhere because it can be live streaming on pretty much every platform at that point. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to know about what's going on in and around the world and, and the nation and whatnot. Uh, there's a, still a lot going on. I'm just kind of breezing through some of the hot topics. Let's talk about uh, some new programs. So MCAT uh, is a media, uh, does programs for the community. It's called Media Assistant Grants. We uh, provide uh, production videos for many nonprofits in the area, which includes um, lecture series, rallies, causes, concerts that help benefit many of the profit nonprofits in the city of Missoula and in the county. Um, but the, the only stipulation, it has to be in Missoula. So if you're calling from Kalispell, you want us to go up there to shoot, come to some kind of baseball tournament, that's not going to happen. So without further ado, here is some of the uh, programs that we air on our channel from all these mags. What I uh, use are my photographs that I've taken over the years. I modify them, enlarge them, and I can draw right on the plate, right on the plastic. So you put the plastic over the image that you want to That's reproduce. exactly right. Okay. And the one I'm going to show you at the very end is one that I kind of made up. I kind of drew the bird in. I kind of made up the background. But we saw these turkeys uh, down at Lee Metcalf walking in the snow. And it was so funny because about every third step, phew, they'd poke right through. <laughs> and uh, it was just hilarious. Yeah. So I, I took these photos. Uh -huh. And I took one. And in Photoshop, you can do a thing called posterize. And I posterized this, not this image, but a similar one, put it on Facebook, and my, my dear friend Hans Peters, who's a, a hero, uh, a, a painter in California, said, Kate, that's your finest work. And I said, Hans, that's a photo. And so I He was making me better because I couldn't do it on my own. I have wasted so much damn time in relationships apologizing for gaining weight, for getting lazy, for not caring as much as I should, and for embarrassing my partners because who wants to be seen with such a fat girlfriend? Even after years of recovery, I found ways to distract my partners from what my body looks like. Maybe we can keep the lights off this time. Maybe if I keep them focused on my boobs, they won't look at my stomach. Maybe if I wear those jeans instead of these ones, they can't tell that my thighs touch unless I stand my, with my feet this far apart. <laughs> maybe if I give in to their sexual advances one more time, maybe if I let them coerce me one more time, they'll forgive me for what I look like. Using the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle, as kind of the framework for that. Um, so there's things like e-waste and batteries and food and glass and uh, uh, lots and lots of stuff. I think we have 21 different categories of materials on there. So I encourage you to check it out. 0by50missoula.com. Take a card if that's hard for you to remember. Um, and, or take a card and share it with your pals. Spread the word. Thank you to the Good Food Store for helping us um, get the word out about this website. <laughs> Hey guys, let's talk about some city council. But before we get into the new housing policy that the city passed, we're going to talk a little bit about tourism, tourism business improvement districts, which are put in place to help uh, bolster uh, 
tourism in the city of Missoula by having the hotels in the Missoula area at a little bit of a tax to the people who go to those hotels just maybe two or three dollars per room just to help bolster tourism and increase travel to the city of Missoula so we have this uh, one thing that uh, let me see let me actually get my notes uh, this that's that's the only part I memorized so let's actually get to the point where I talk Barb Nielsen uh, TBID talks about hotels in Missoula and how they can uh, help in homelessness without hurting local businesses we feel very strongly that we do not want those organizations that are working so hard to, um, to work on a major issue in our community um, to, to have a detrimental effect from this. Um, so, so at this point, it's the Union Gospel Mission um, of Missoula, it's the YWCA, and it's the Missoula Interfaith Collaborative that we are working with on this issue. Um, secondly, the other issue that was brought up was um, what business is bring, being brought into town to support smaller hotels. Um, there's a feeling from the small hotels that what they're seeing in business is simply uh, things that benefit larger conventions and meetings and larger hotels. Um, in 2018-19, just in our sports market, now that doesn't include our meetings and conventions, just in our sports market, we are working with 32 sporting events with an approximate economic impact of 4.8 million dollars for this community and we and those uh and that money is usually generated by uh baseball tournaments um summer tournaments for a lot of sports summer leagues you know like they have all-star baseball and whatnot um many of the things that they talked about is uh uh you know they want to they wanted to say that bigger businesses help draw more people here, but with more people going to the bigger hotels, they were hoping that uh, because of the capacity, they were able to go to the smaller hotels as a result. Uh, but also, it's more than just uh, conferences, because a lot of times conferences are just like they're centralized in that particular hotel for all those rooms. So many solutions are from sporting events like baseball tournaments over the summer where kids and their families come over are budgeting through smaller hotels, which uh, TBIDs support through this. Okay, big news in affordable housing. Oh, sorry about that. Um, as the city of Missoula plans to adopt a downtown master plan that would help build higher density commercial housing while also trying to figure out how to serve the underserved populations like students, a uh, place called home is why we had so many people at council last uh, last Monday night and talking about this. So Stacy Seabress with the Missoula Interfaith Collaborative is very supportive of this new um, uh, pl policy. In a time marked by nas national divisiveness and political polarization, our efforts in Missoula have become a hopeful picture of a strong and engaged base of citizens working effectively with local government. Aaron Payhan and all of you, our elected officials, have worked closely with us to incorporate our solutions into what is being presented in the city housing plan. All right. So, uh, talking more a little bit about this is that this was a community-driven program. It was called Our Missoula at one point, and it was engaging many citizens. Our Missoula is basically uh, a plan to get a lot of people's um, feedback and be like, what do you think about Missoula, and wh how do you think it can improve? And then a place called Home was the development strategy after the assessment for the needs and the policy being like how they want to move actually are going to move forward and put this into development developers plans and also moving forward about this as well and of course what was dubbed a master plan a couple of years ago and then became our Missoula now continues with a place called home where Missoula has to deal with an ever-growing demand for a limited amount of homes there's a, a low supply but there's a high demand because there's a lot of people wanting to move into Missoula um, and Elliot Thompson spoke on behalf of the renters of Missoula because the renters take up so much of the population in the city of Missoula 1966 if Missoula is truly a progressive town, then our policies, the compositions of our advisory groups, and our language should reflect that. If the Missoula Organization of Realtors says about 51% of the housing units in Missoula are renter-occupied, maybe 51% of the members for the future and current advisory groups should be composed of renters and people explicitly representing renters. Maybe we need unhoused representation. Maybe the people who control the vast majority of the wealth in our community should not compose a majority or even a plurality of any public organization or advisory group or steering committee focused on solving our housing crisis. 
Thank you, sir. All right. So um, that that was one of the uh, many concerns about some of the people is that a lot of people aren't uh, able to afford. Uh, a lot of their money goes to rent, and they're unable to save money to go into their first home. Michael Workman talks about gentrification and how that's not good for Missoula because it's constantly falling in suit with all of the other communities that have not really worked out with serving the affordable housing problem. Public and affordable housing. Uh, public and affordable housing needs to be the most prioritized development in this city. We need to protect the current affordable housing and acquire more public housing. Missoula should look into adopting the first right of refusal policy that cities like Paris have recently adopted, which gives them the chance to buy certain buildings at market value and turn them into public housing. We need denser zoning and inclusionary zoning only in wealthy neighborhoods who disproportionately benefit from the effects of gentrification while not having to carry the burden and are at no risk of displacement. We need more tenants and working class people on these um, community committees, on these committees. As they stand, they are composed mostly of developers, realtors, nonprofit representatives, and those in the political class. True democracy would include working people and tenants in these committees. Without that, the interests of the powerful and the wealthy will always come before us. All right, so that was Michael Workman's comment on this uh, new housing policy, that it doesn't solve uh, the housing crisis and the affordable housing. So we got... Um, um, Dwight Easton, he's with the Missoula Organization, Organization of Realtors, who does support this new policy. In short, hundreds of hours of deliberative consideration have gone into this proposal. We appreciate the efforts to create a balance between public, nonprofit, and private programs to leverage strengths each entity brings to addressing the issues. The proposed policy has acknowledged that it will take a, a commitment by the entire community to address the issues of increased housing stocks. Missoula Organization of Realtors believes that home ownership is the basis of economic stability and provides for strong communities. We look forward to working with the city and staff to implement the programs that will reduce barriers to creating housing and expand opportunities for all Missoulians to obtain affordable housing. Thank you. All right, so that was um, Dwight Easton. Uh, the next uh, part of the um, of this meeting is that they went to recess, and then they brought in Erin Peehan. Erin uh, Peehan is with the Office of Housing and Community Development, and she worked hard on this uh, a place called Home Strategy. She had gave an update on how they're going to present it at this public hearing. I talked about it a couple weeks ago in my committee meeting report. So this is what she had to say in terms of you know gentrification concerns. We don't want to see small single family homes be scraped to build larger uh, homes at a higher property value. Um, we also want to figure out how we preserve diversity in housing type as well, mobile homes being a very important uh, component of our housing stock. For a lot of Missoulians, it is the last affordable option for home ownership, and we need to figure out how to preserve our mobile home parks across the community. We have strong recommendations in the plan about how we can achieve that through partnering and supporting organizations like NeighborWorks Montana and their resident-owned community model. And so you're absolutely right. The plan focuses a lot on how we preserve what we have today. All right, so that's just w one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about is that this policy would be kind of uh, be car get carried away with itself in terms of development. Um, Brian Von Losberg talks about economic levels in the city of Missoula and how it's no different than other any other places in the nation. Our best policies come when the community is engaged in developing those, and I'm very grateful. Um, even if you don't agree with every aspect of it, I'm grateful for your involvement in the process. Um, and lastly, to my colleagues, I hope you adopt this tonight. Uh, I'm certainly in support of it. The heavy lifting on our part uh, really begins now. Um, this is the easier part of our task. Um, and as we get into the detailed implementation steps in Title 20 and elsewhere, setting up a fund, uh, uh, the, the, 
the details around how that's administered, advisory boards, et cetera, and there's been a lot of good input about those. Um, that's where the, the rubber's going to meet the road, the devil's in the details, all those sort of expressions. So thank you, Aaron, for all of your work on this, everyone who's been involved, uh, and I'm in support. All right, so that was Brian Von Locksburg in support of uh, this motion. Jesse Ramos, uh, who is the only person who opposed this measure, uh, he's from Ward 4. He reflects on a place called home and how it's uh how its policy is more than just uh something that may or may not help there's some things he likes about it and some things he doesn't so but he just can't support it going to have to like boulder colorado where they have to commute an hour and a half to get to their job because they can't afford to live in the city and i'm, I'm very worried about that and i hope that everybody understands that i'm not voting against this policy because i don't support affordable housing it's because i do support affordable housing and in my opinion i think that this is going to make matters um far worse um i i think that it sounds good but i don't think it's actually going to do any good and respectfully um i i think that if i were to vote yes on this it's as, as Ms. Payan said, it's kind of a package deal, and I don't want to commit to that. But that being said, um, as we visit some of these um, before the council individually, I'm happy to support um, some of the stuff within the within the policy, but I just can't support it as is. Thank you. All right. So uh, the last quote I have from this meeting is from um, Julie Armstrong. She's Ward 5, and she's in support of this. We did a study a couple of years ago. We had someone come in and and work with Ms. Payhan's department about quantifying the cost of homelessness. And I think the average price, and I'm probably going to get these numbers wrong, Aaron, but it's anywhere from eighteen to $80,000 per year per chronically homeless person. And where do you think that money's coming from? It's coming from your tax dollars. So implementing a policy like this is good economic sense, and the unintended consequences that you might be worried about will probably yield, yield you more benefits and actually tax savings in the long run. So I encourage you to support all the folks in this room that have worked so hard to get here. Thanks. All right, so that was Julie Armstrong with the last quote from this meeting as well. Uh, affordable housing is hard, and especially on the national level, um, and the city moved to pass this motion. And, of course, Brian von Wallersburg said earlier is that this is kind of a level level uh, lever action that can be adjusted to meet any challenges that they see in the future. And, of course, you know, once this passed, you could hear the applause in the city council chambers ring out. So if you are interested in watching this whole meeting, the um, um, the meeting was about three hours long. Uh, the meeting ended around 10.05 on Monday night. You can go to the City of Missoula's website to watch this meeting as its entirety, all the public comments, all the concerns, um, ci.missoula.mt.us. All right, I'm going to switch some gears, and we're going to go to something a little uh, more uh, light. Uh, this is uh, dub and stuff, uh, and this is from the movie Return of the Kung Fu Dragon. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Not you. I see. Uh, all this bleach I spent on my beer for nothing. I still think you look pretty good. Hmm? <laughs> That's weird. You sound like my mirror. <laughs> oh! Come on, guys. <laughs> Can you still believe he thinks I'm the mirror? I don't think that's very funny. It's kind of mean that you're pretending to be the dick? mirror. I spend all this money on this bleach. I get my beard mm -hmm. all white. Well, your beard is the fairest of them all. <laughs> all right, boys, let's uh, rape and pillage. Mmm, I just love that pillaging. Well, that was quite a nice compliment he paid me. My beard is pretty white. Right, beard maiden? My kakini kakini macarena. One kasin, I can say that's a pena. Hey, macarena, macarena, macarena. Hey, macarena. Do you like 90s references, ladies? I can't say that I do. Well, then off with you, then. <laughs> Just wait till I get started on Hoopa Stank. Oh. I got a lot of her. Oh, that's weird. Who? Oh, jeez. That's just haunting to look at. What are you looking at, sir? Do you... Okay. Is she just... Are you people messing with me? Let's talk about more about... Oh? Oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> oh, man. I swear to God, if they don't play Hoopa Stink, I'm going to freak out. Oh, oh. Man, I got a lie for you. Oh, hey. Hey, 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 listen. 
Oh my god! Uh, sure, 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 it's okay. Oh my god, are you okay? Are you lost, you little... Don't you dare finish those words, or I will and freak then. out, okay? We heard a weird thing. We came to investigate. It's time for your monthly, uh... No! Well, you know. I do not wish to partake in this. All right, don't come crawling to us. Man, it'll be like the elevator scene in The Shining. All right, you can come out now. Whoa, you got some nice digs in here. I got this letter for you. No, don't worry about it. It's not as late with drugs or anything. It's actually a legit letter this time. What if it's a subpoena? Come on, you can take it. You know how letters work. Okay, but if this is a subpoena, I'm going to be really, really mad. Hmm. Opening the letter. Opening oh, she's the letter. singing? Rip, rip, tear. Read, read, read. Please stop, ma'am. Well, it must be important because of this close-up. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Whoa, this is a big letter. Oh, jeez. I just don't think I can handle what's next. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. But before we get to that, I want to remind you guys is that our website, MCAT.org, is top rated. So if you guys get a chance, you should totally check out our website. MCAT, our user applications are now available online. Uh, you can check out many of the things that we have in here. There's still available room in some of our summer camps, so you can check that out. All you gotta do is click on the link. Click on Graham's face right here from back in the day. Um, let's see, let's see what else can I talk about. Uh, tours, if you have a group here who wants to come on by, um, I uh, the flagship program is due to come by and just kind of get an nice little tour of our studio. Um, we also are, uh, our Saturday drop-ins are going to be uh, kicking off again sometimes um, in the fall, so just letting you guys know that I probably should update the uh, website as well. Uh, Wake Up Missoula. If you want to learn more about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to made your uh, write it out twice. This Friday, I have a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking about, including... Um, uh, maybe a tease from our very own uh, dude I just drew, Junior, which we're going to be doing on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. So tomorrow on Thursday, we're going to do a f funny, fun uh, dude I just drew, Junior, and then we're going to be streaming it on MCAT's Facebook page. So stay tuned for that. Let's talk about some events. Hey, guys, there's a lot of things happening today, and part of this is... Uh, Zootown Arts Community Center is doing a bunch of camps, and ending this Friday is that the uh, the campers will be performing a stage uh, by local celebrities the evening on Friday, June 28th. The venue is to be determined. Yes Fest embraces the ideas of yes and, so it's, a, it's an improv group with a bunch of kids. It's children's imaginations and bringing them to the community via public stage. Over the course of the week, children participate in Yes Fest, write, design, build, and direct a series of short plays teaching youth skills in stagecraft, collaborative creation, and social skills. So many uh, camps are happening at the Zootown Arts Community Center. You can look up zac.org for more information. Frenchtown Storytime. If you're interested in doing some Storytime, the Missoula Public Library sponsors a Storytime in the uh, Frenchtown branch, but also does Tiny Tales at Missoula Food Bank all around 10.30 a.m. Out to Lunch is going on today from 11 to 2 p.m. Uh, every Wednesday for the foreseeable uh, summer time uh, until the end of August uh, out to lunch uh, at Karis Park. It's just a great way to have a venue, hang out, and just listen to some local music and just have some lunch. Drop and Crafts at Big Sky Branch. Big Sky High School is, uh, school year might be over, but their uh, library is open, and you get to make some arts and crafts there starting at 1 p.m. every Wednesday. Uh, wine tasting. Hey, guys, it's, it's summer. The... Uh, Everything's ripe. Everything's looking really good. Chow Mambo, Independence Day is just around the corner. And to celebrate, you're invited to join us for this uh, tasting of six sensational American wines. They'll be pouring uh, Pinot Noirs from Sonoma and uh, Willamette Valley, uh, a Bordeaux blend uh, uh, and a Rhone blend from the Columbia Valley, and two of our favorite American whites from Oregon and Napa. Uh, and that's going to be at Chow Mambo, 5.30 p.m. Imp Improvational Musical Theater Workshop. Base Community Center is doing a fun welcoming workshop to improve our skills and relate improva um, improvational music, musical theater. We'll certainly work with improv, rhythm, pitch, and uh, rhyming. There will be many options for you how to, uh, you would like to participate and how you can always step back and watch it at any time. And it's the Base Center is at the warehouse building across from the train tracks from Draftworks.
so you can't miss it. And that's happening at 5.45 tonight. Community Day Outreach Night with the Missoula Osprey at uh, their Osprey Baseball Field, Oregon Park, Allegiance Field. Watch the Missoula Osprey take on the Billions Mustang to support the Heroic a Therapeutic Outreach Program. The Osprey will donate 50% of the ticket proceeds for any ticket purchased through the link below. Mm. And it's to support the Veterans Program. So uh, you can uh, go to uh, MissoulaEvents.net to find this link. Um, uh, once again, it's the... Uh, um, Missoula Osprey will be taking on the Billions of Mustang to support your veterans. All starting at 7 p.m. And tonight at 8 p.m., you got the City Band. Every Wednesday night until August 15th, uh, the Missoula City Band is going to be at Bonner Park Band Shell. You can't miss it. It's the giant band shell in Bonner Park. And they're going to be doing it. It's live music every Wednesday from June 19th to August 14th. I probably should have read it instead of just using my memory from it. Uh, Gary Gillette brings uh, over a, about 100 people in the community, myself included, and we just play music. And it's a variety of music, and I believe there's a little taste of, um, all right, here's a little uh, tease from tonight's uh, band concert, one of the songs. It's very, very frightening. All right, anyways, so that's pretty much all you need to know about your Thursday events. They got some karaoke tonight at the Badlander, the Dark Horse, um, and they got some trivia at the Silver Slipper and also at the Press Box and all sorts of things. I believe it's going to also be at um, Broadway Bar and Grill. So there's just a bunch of things happening tonight as well. And without further ado, here is an art clip, and this is pretty much going to go well into September, and this is going to be at the, well, you just have to find out, watch and find out. Hey guys, let's talk about some Thursday events as we jump into your Thursday events. You got all those indoor sports arenas happening. It might be thundering, it might be storming outside, so you might want to check out um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and also Mismo Gymnastics and Ridge Decker Sports Center. Just to highlight, but it's summertime. Be outdoors and hang out, do some hiking. There's a bunch of mountains around here. We're in Missoula. Uh, hands on science, terrific teeth. Learn about the human and animal teeth at the Discovery Bench. Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a bunch of camps, but today they're doing a dis uh, Discovery Bench. Uh, and in the makerspace, they're doing cardboard construction. Who doesn't love cardboard? Kids love cardboard. And it's usually 350 for anyone four and over, and if you're under three, you get in free. And this is a organization uh, branched through the uh, University of Montana Spectrum Discovery Center. Word. Missoula Public Library is an in introduction into Microsoft Word, a word processing program designed for Windows in, uh, environment. Assumes that the students has experience with Windows and using a mouse. Th I'm really happy that they added that right there because I think they just kind of got sick and tired of people just being like, how do you use this thing? Well, what is this thing? How do you use it? So anyways, I think they're just kind of like, it's like, you got to know how to use a mouse if you're going to be in this program. That's, it's, 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 it's not a really steep uh, a prerequisite, but it's, it's there. Uh, can it fly? Guessing game. Mizzou and Sectarium is going to be talking about the flying bugs, uh, a hard outer skeleton, three many body parts, a part with antenna and six legs. But when it comes to wings, it varies. Come play a fun guessing game. 
to discover the diversity of insect wings. After the game, they'll be using a rubbing plate to create a colorful insect. Did you know that some ants have wings? Pride Month celebration. The C3 work lounge tomorrow at 4:30. The LGBT pins with the uh, uh, will be celebrating diversity, inclusion, equality, and love with their very own, very own Pride Month. And it's the e uh, C3 work lounge. Um, it's you get an LGBTQ pins with uh, which will be available to the public for a dollar each, and all proceeds will go to to be donated. All right. So, anyways, Orchard Homes uh, Fam uh, Farmers Market. Tu they have a Tuesday market at the Red X's, uh, usually around the same time, 4:30 to about 7. This time, it's going to be at the Red Barn Orchard Homes. It's in that area right behind Natural Grocers, just off of Reserve. If you drive by Reserve and you see a giant, really nice barn with uh, um, what's that called? Uh, solar panels um, on top of the building. That's when they're going to have it. And yeah, it's going to be some farmers market, and it's going to be happening at 4:30 tomorrow. Downtown tonight, Karis Park. Hey, every Wednesday at 11, it's uh, out to lunch. And every uh, Thursday at 5.30, it's downtown tonight. And it is a wonderful time to enjoy uh, music and food. And also, they have a beer gardens for some of you who like to uh, indulge. Uh, also happening for your Thursday night is if you're interested in going out and about, they got uh, Party Volcano at the Badlander, which is a bunch of DJ music, if you're into that. They got Dark Horse. Uh, they're doing a rocking karaoke. They got... Uh, Rock in theater at uh, se uh, sepia tonic, so like think of a sepia tone, and it's sepia tonic, and it's gonna be at Monks Dive Bar Daughters is gonna be at the Sunrise Saloon, and it's gonna be some country music. So there's a lot of things happening here as well. Uh, there's also gonna be a book reading and book signing called Pete from a job you mostly won't know how to do, which is a book, uh, and it's happening, uh, which uh, Pete uh, F Fromm is a five-time winner of the Pacific Northwest Best Seller Literary Award for his novels, if not for this, as cool as I am and how this all started. This story collection, Dry Rain and the Memoir Indian Creek Chronicles, he is the faculty of Pacific University's low residency MFA program and lives in Montana with his family. All right, if you're interested in learning more about your Missoula events, you can go to missoulaevents.net. Hey, what's going on Missoula? There it is, missoulaevents.net. It's just a wonderful resource that I use just to tell what's the basically what's going on. There's always something going on in Missoula, especially in the summer. There's going to be so many festivals every single weekend. It's like, yo, man, it's the festival to end all festivals. Like, every festival is end all festivals. <laughs> all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've I've vented enough, so thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is my last Wednesday show for a while. Um, I'm going to be still airing on Fridays, so it's going to be a once a week show. I'm going to kind of hopefully try to change things up a little bit, so it's not too timely. So I'll try to be uh, more like a show that's more about a show, and you know you can watch it at any time. So without further ado, I'm Scott Ramp, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. It is hump day, so with For Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Mm -hmm.